This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It sure is great having you join me here in these online lessons. In this Guitar 101 mini course, it's all about flat picking. Now with this course, I'm using that term as an overarching term for the course a little bit loosely. Technically, flat picking especially refers to bluegrass guitar players and Appalachian guitar players who use a flat pick as opposed to finger picks or doing finger picking, uh, especially those who do a lot of the melodic content. So, stuff like that in that music, and you can hear that bluegrass that Appalachian style right there inside that little melodic piece that I played. So that's really in a strict term where flat picking is used, but in this course I'm going to cover a lot of rhythmic playing that also uses uh, is used in those styles and is used, has crossed over and been used in a lot of other styles. Now melodic players in other styles like jazz, I play a lot of jazz and blues, rock, they don't refer to them as flat pickers but are also using a flat pick to play melodic ideas. So flat picking sort of refers to somebody who plays that melodic content in that bluegrass style, the Appalachian style. So. I'm using the term though a little bit more loosely because we're also going to work on the rhythmic guitar playing that happens in that style that has crossed over into other styles too. So country music has been influenced by it, but there's also times even in rock and pop music where we're using some of the same techniques. So in this course, I'm going to cover a lot of things. So we're going to start off by working on inserting bass note plucks in the strumming patterns. Is that sort of an essential part? of the rhythmic playing that happens with flat picking. Uh, what would be considered flat pickers can do rhythmic guitar. So we're going to be doing starting off there in this course. That's a fundamental technique. We'll work then on doing alternate bass plucking, which is pretty cool. Now Johnny Cash's style really uses this technique a lot, so it's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite things to do on the guitar. There's just something driving about this kind of rhythm on guitar. So we're going to work on alternating bass note plucks in the strumming patterns. We'll also work on inserting bass note runs, which is a common thing. So we'll, insert, we'll learn how to insert bass note runs. And then uh, we'll get into the sort of the fills. into that sort of thing and then at the very end of the lesson or the very end of the course not the very end of the lesson but the, the end of this mini course we'll get into some of that melodic content as well how to improvise little fills and how to play some of those melodic uh, bluegrass type things so it's gonna be great it's gonna be a great course we're gonna go ahead in this first lesson and work on inserting bass note plucks into a strumming pattern because that's sort of an essential uh, technique and it's used in a lot of different styles. So go ahead and get started. I have the strumming pattern that we're going to work on in this lesson written up here on the board. If you're not familiar with these symbols, there's quick answer videos that can help you with that. But the B is going to indicate the bass note pluck and then the, like the little three-sided rectangle is a down, a down strum and the V is an upstrum, V like a U. So if you've seen any of the other videos that I have on strumming techniques, or you went through the basic chords and strumming mini course, or any of the books that I have where you're working on the chords, you're familiar with this, but I mentioned that. And then this is rhythmic notation. So we're in 4-4 four, four time. We have 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and. So this strumming, if I did it on a G chord, I'm going to pluck the bass note, bass, and then down. strumming pattern. And we're going to work on it in all the keys that are pretty common in first position. If we were to work, if we were to move into a key where we're playing in a flat key, uh, it's just we're just going to be using a capo using one of these keys anyway. And some of these keys are more popular than others, um, especially in the bluegrass and Appalachian folk styles and so on, all the sort of styles of music that have been influenced by that by those styles um, tend to stick more to the key of like G and C 
uh, but we're going to work on all these keys because in the various music that uh, you might end up playing, uh, we end up using any of these keys. So I'm going to work on all these keys with you on how to do this strumming pattern inserting the bass note pluck. It's going to be great. The chord progressions, these five chord progressions are written on a handout. You can download that in PDF form. Use the link in the description below. You can have a copy of that, but I also have them written up here on the board. Okay, so we're going to start off with this first one. And I should say, if you don't know any of these chords, you can go through the basic, uh, the mini, the basic chords and strumming uh, mini series that will take you through learning all these chords and strumming techniques. I'm jumping in here, assuming that you know these chords or most of these chords. There's also quick answer videos that can help you figure out how to play these and there's other online resources if there's a chord that you don't know how to play but here in this mini series I am not going to be going over how to actually play the chords we're going to work on the strumming techniques and then the the melodic playing techniques so we'll go ahead here with the bass down up down up down up just to get used to that strumming pattern if you haven't done it before we're going to start without the bass and just use a down pluck and just mute the strings you're going to have down down up down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And muting the strings, I'm just lightly touching them, by the way. I'm not really pushing them down. I'm just lightly touching them so I can just get the rhythmic sound. So down, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the strumming pattern. And this is sort of how it works with strumming patterns. You might know of various strumming patterns, especially on beats one or three sometimes, um, but almost always on beat one, if we have a down strum in a strumming pattern, we can replace that down strum with a bass note plug. And then we can also do that on beat three for some strumming patterns as well. It's not so common to insert a bass note plug on, say, beats two or four in 4-4 four, four time, but on beat one, it's, it's really common, and then sometimes on beat three. So, what we're doing with the strumming pattern of down, down, up, down, up, down, up, which is a strumming pattern that is used in a lot of different styles, it's a pretty fundamental strumming pattern, is that we're replacing what would be the initial down strum with a bass note pluck. So for now, we're just, you can just practice off that sixth string. So the bass note pluck of that, and I'm just going to pluck it and then strum. Now, as we actually cross the strumming pattern over to inserting it into chord progressions and using the chords, we have to find the actual bass note of the chord. And the bass note is the lowest note of the chord. So, in the case of all these chords, it's also the root note. So, an E chord, the lowest note is the root note, the note that the chord is named for an E pitch. For an A chord, it's an A pitch. For a B7, it's a B pitch. For a D, it's a D pitch. For a D7, it's a D, and so, and so on. G, it's a G. C, it's a C. So here's sort of a trick. We have this open sixth string as an E. So any type of E chord, E, E minor, E7, we're going to be plucking that open string to play the bass note. The fifth string is an A, so for any type of A chord, that's going to be our bass note. It's going to be that open A string. I'm playing A, A minor, A, uh, A, A7, A minor is what I did there. So the A chord, A7, A minor, any of those, it's going to be that open fifth string. And then the fourth string is a D. So for any D chord, D, D minor, D7, use that open fourth string and it's as simple as that then for any of the other types of chords it's the lowest string that we have a finger on so for example when we play G it's that low sixth string is going to be our it's going to be our bass because the lowest string we have a finger on is that sixth string we've got that I'm using my ring finger some of you may figure it this way and in this style I will say that we tend to use what I call the three finger G as opposed to the one that has four fingers on. So we're leaving that second string open, we're not pressing it down at the third fret. So this is more of a pop rock G. In this style we tend to more often use the three finger G and have that B, B note, the open second string ring, ringing on that, on that second string instead of having it first down. 
So uh, for a C chord, for example, my lowest, the lowest one I have a finger on is the fifth string. Got my ring finger there, third fret of that. So that's the one I'm going to plunk as the bass note. For an F, if I was using the four string F, which is pretty common in this style, I would just use that fourth string because that's the lowest one I have a finger on. But if I did use the bar chord, the full six string bar chord, then I would plunk the low six string. So that's sort of a trick to finding the bass notes, and that's we're going to need to do that as we play through this. But I'll also review these as we go through. So we'll go ahead and insert this bass down, up, down, up, down. Up. Let's just practice that with an E chord for a moment. So you're going to have the open E string, that low six string, and then down, up, down, up, down, up, bass down. Have the A, you get the open fifth string, so you can pra practice finding that note. And if you miss it sometimes, it's okay. This takes a lot of accuracy in the right hand and in the left hand, especially when you get to the melodic content. But starting right here with the chord playing, it takes so much accuracy. Uh, it takes a little focus and we don't always hit it and that's just reality so it's okay don't give yourself too much of a hard time if you miss a note from here uh, here and there I just missed one as I was trying to talk so the A, a chord you practice with that one a little bit for the B7 the lowest string we have a finger on is that fifth string so it's also going to be the fifth string We play this and we'll do one time per chord so we're doing one measure per chord that's written and you'll see that in the handout if you've downloaded it so we're going to insert this string pattern one time per chord on this first line we go one two ready and we got e. look at the next one where we've got A, D, and E7. So we've already practiced with A and E, E7 is just similar. But let's take a moment here and get used to doing the D. So the D uses the open fourth string. So you get used to plucking out that bass note and down, up, down, up. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play the second one, A, D, and E7. Here you go, one, two, ready, you'd have A, D, A, E7, A, D, E7, and A. Now if we look at the next one, we have D, G, and A7. We've already worked some with D and A. A7 uses the same bass note as A. So let's just practice with G. You're going to have bass down, up, down, up, down, up. Using that low six string as our bass, because that's the lowest one we have a finger on. Let's do this one. So you got, starting with the D. One, two, ready, and D. Next one, we got G, C, and D7. So G and D, D7 has the same bass note as D. We'll look just at C, where we use that fifth string. So that's the lowest one we have a finger on. So we use that one, just practice a little bit with C, getting used to it. ahead and do this fourth one. So you got starting on the G. One, two, ready, and G. C, G, D7, G, C, D7, and G. Just like that. If we look at the last 
last one we're going C, F, and G7. So we use the same bass note that we were for G, uh, using for G, we'll use for G7, so that low six string. And C is the same, but F is the new one. If you use that four string F, which is the one that's used in this style mostly, then I'm going to be plucking the fourth string from my F. So get used to that, because that's the lowest one we have a finger on, so you can practice that a little bit. So starting here with C, we got one, two, ready, and C, F, C, G7, C, F, G7, and C. So that is that skill, and this is fundamental to what we're going to be working on as we proceed through this mini course. It's awesome. This is such fun stuff. I love sort of the driving feel of the rhythm guitar. And of course the melodic content is great too. I'll say that's kind of a nice medium tempo. One of the things that defines some of this playing, depending on the style you're in, is speed. And so you can work it up. You want to work it up till you can get it fast. Bass note plucks aren't, uh, that doesn't really speed up, they come sooner, but it's really in the strumming. And if you want to speed up your strumming, all you got to do, you got to keep this right hand relaxed. So instead of um, uh, tightening up, if you tighten up, it's really hard to go fast. It's just, it is. And then the other thing is the faster we go sometimes, the more it gets into the wrist, and it, it just becomes in the wrist instead of like a full on strumming. So if I'm trying to go fast, to go with big strumming strokes it's impossible and it's hard but I just tighten up my strumming pattern it gets in the wrist and it's just a back and forth so and I have to relax to get it going that fast so if you got the strumming pattern down and you want to get more involved to work up your skill do that, you keep the strumming stroke really small, just in the wrist. It's an up, down, 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 up. Okay, that gets us going in this mini course on finger picking, and we're going to be building on this. In lesson two, I'm actually going to look at doing the same thing with 3-4 time, because this technique gets used in 3-4 time. Not uh, as often as in bluegrass per se, but there uh, it does happen in a lot of styles, folk styles, country style, even times where we're playing pop music and rock music and so on, using this technique uh, with songs that are in 3-4 or in other meters like 6-8 where we might be using the same type of 3-4 based kind of strumming pattern to play in say 6-8 or 9-8 or something or 12-8. So in, the, in lesson two, we'll work on this with 3-4 time. And then as we move into lesson three, uh, we'll be changing up the strumming pattern and getting a little bit more involved with two bass note flux per measure. And then we'll be moving into doing flat uh, alternating bass notes in the strumming patterns and then bass note runs and then into doing melodic fills and melodic content. It's a great course. I hope to keep seeing you. Hope you're having fun with playing the guitar. Check out other uh, courses in the academy and also method books if you want more in-depth lessons and more help with various things. Take care. We'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.